A calendar spread is a strategy made up of two options, either two calls or two puts, where one is sold in a certain expiration and the other one is bought in a later expiration, but with both calls or puts at the same strike price. These strategies are conservative, slow-moving vehicles that try to capitalize on the accelerated theta in the front expiration and the larger vega in the back expiration to create a strategy that is both positive theta and positive vega while aiming for the underlying to stay inside a price range. In this lesson, we'll look at calendar spreads and how we can make use of them efficiently and incorporate them into our portfolio. We're going to start talking about calendar spreads by relying on information and concepts that we already know. For example, we know that we have the different expirations here, we know that we have different strike prices here, and we know that we have the bid and the ask for the different options, and we know that we have calls on the left-hand side and puts on the right-hand side. We also know that when we talk about spreads, we've already looked at a certain type of spread. We've, we've looked at vertical spreads. And vertical spreads, one of the things that uh, is particular about vertical spreads is that they use only one expiration. So both components, either both calls or both puts, one long and one short at different strike prices, have to have the same expiration to be considered verticals or vertical spreads. We're talking about long call spread and long put spreads. These are considered uh, debit spreads. And we're also talking about the short spreads, the short call spread and the short put spreads, which are considered vertical credit spreads. So we know that vertical spreads are spreads that are made up of a long and a short component of the same type. So a long call and a short call or a long put and a short put the same ex with the same expiration with different strike prices. But what would happen if we take two different expirations and we move the long component of our vertical spread to a further out expiration? So instead of using only one expiration, such as this one, we're going to take the long component and we're going to push it out to a different expiration. So we're going to start using different expirations. In that case, we're going to have, instead of a long call spread, and a long put spread, we're going to start talking about horizontal spreads, also called time spreads. And they're called horizontal because in the past, the different months and the different expirations were laid out uh, horizontally. And nowadays, they're both, um, both strike prices and also expirations are laid out vertically. But this is the reason why they're called horizontal spreads. So they're also called time spreads. It's easier to understand if we refer to them as time spreads. If we use two different expirations and we take the long component of a long call spread and a long put spread, what we're going to have is we're going to have something called a diagonal long call spread and a diagonal long put spread. Same with short call spreads and short put spreads. If we push the long component, the long call and the long put, we're going to have diagonal short call spreads and diagonal short put spreads. This is not so important at this point, but it's just to illustrate how we're going to get to a calendar spread. So at this point, we would have a, 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 a kind of a vertical spread that is spanning two different expirations. Those are called diagonals. Now, what will happen if we take any of these diagonal spreads and instead of having the long and the short either call or put, on a different strike price, on different expirations, we keep the different expirations, but we make them the same strike price. In this case, we're going to be selling the front expiration and we're going to be buying the, the uh, longer expiration. What we're gonna have is, if we use the same strike, we're going to have calendar spreads and calendar spreads can be made up of all calls or all puts. So both calls or both puts. 
In this case, a calendar spread is a spread that's made up of either two calls or two puts where we are selling the front expiration and we're buying the back expiration. So the shorter expiration is being sold and the longer expiration is being bought either with calls or with puts. Usually, we try to keep those components out of the money so that we don't have to deal with anything that's in the money. So if we have a calendar spread where the strike price that we're using is higher than the current underlying price, we usually use calls. And if the price, if the strike price that we want to use is lower than where the underlying price is, then we use uh, in this case puts so that we use out of the money puts or out of the money calls but you can create a calendar spread with calls or with puts it makes no difference let's start analyzing calendar spreads and we're going to start with call calendar spreads how do we put a calendar spread together with calls well the way we put it together is by taking a long call that we buy on the back, so with a back expiration, with a long expiration, with a, the longer expiration that we're gonna use, we're going to buy a call at a certain strike price. And then the front expiration, we're going to sell a call at the same strike price. So we're gonna have a short call on the front expiration, and we're gonna have a long call on the back expiration. If we, put it, if we put them together, we're going to have a calendar spread with calls. Now, one of the things you're going to notice here is that some of the components here are going to be undefined or not exactly precise. They're going to be approximations because when we, when we deal with vertical spreads, we're dealing with only one expiration, with only one number of days to expiration, with only one implied volatility. When we start using several different expirations, we have different days to expiration and we also have different implied volatilities that are somewhat independent of each other so that's why this is something that is going to be uh, a little bit different than what we've seen so far but still we're going to be able to use these strategies in in whenever this is a appropriate for our market outlook when we talk about structure we've already seen what uh, what a calendar spread is and that is a short at the money or out of the money call on the front month or on the front expiration at strike price k and the long at the money or out of the money call on the back month or back expiration at strike price k the reason why i mentioned month or expiration is just to make sure that you understand that even though i might say traders usually say front month and back month but in reality it could be any expiration it could be a weekly a quarterly or in a month it doesn't matter what kind of expiration, as long as it's a different expiration, it doesn't have to be monthly, even though sometimes we refer to the different expirations uh, as uh, front month and back month. So if we look here, we already know this, that we are short the front month and we're long the back month, same strike price. This is the PL line, so this is the PL graph. And this is the uh, the solid line is the line at expiration and the dashed line is the line at any time prior to expiration. This line is going to be changing as time passes and at the end is going to merge with the solid line. So we know that this, just by looking at the uh, P&L graph and, uh, and by looking at the, uh, the risk profile, we know that the uh, profitable area is the area between certain certain numbers certain ranges so it's when the uh, underlying price at expiration is between a certain range so inside a certain range that's when we're going to make money and, th and that range is centered around the strike price that we're using so in this case the strike price k we buy a call in the back month and we sell a call in the front month and then anything around this price is going to be profitable at expiration or prior to expiration as well depending on how the different components start moving in terms of implied volatility days to expiration etc so that was the structure we already talked about that we already talked about the uh 
expiration line and the T plus one line, so the line prior to expiration, the max profit is going to be undefined, is going to be an approximation. And because we don't know the profitable range. Now, remember, when we talk about uh, calendar spread, we're talking about a back expiration being longer, of course, and the front expiration being shorter because we are selling the front month or the front expiration and we're buying the back expiration. When the front expiration rolls off, this is when the calendar spread comes to an end. Okay, so when that happens, if we don't do anything, we are left only with a long option, in this case, a long call. That would be a different strategy altogether. For our purposes, the calendar spread ends exactly when we stop having the two components with different expirations. And at that point, it becomes a long call and it behaves exactly like a long call. We don't care about this component here once the uh, front expiration rolls off or when we close it. If we think about it, what we want is we want our front call, the one that we're short, to expire worthless. And at the same time, we want to maximize the, uh, the value that we have on the back because that one, we're long that call. So the point in price where this happens is right at the money. So when the, when the strike price is right at the money or when the, the underlying price pins the strike price that we have. So because at this point, both the front month is going to be worthless and the back month is going to have some value. Of course, if it goes in the money, if the underlying price keeps going here, yes, we're going to have a higher price in the back month, but we're also going to have a higher price in the front month. And in this case, the uh, price in the front month is going to be growing at a higher rate because the delta of the front month is going to be one pretty much. And the, one, and the one in the back is not going to be one. It's probably going to be around 50 or 60 because we're near the add the money. So as the price starts going higher, yes, the, we're going to start gaining value on the back, but the front is also going to, to gain value and is going to gain value more rapidly. Because of this, what we want is we want to pin, we want the underlying price to pin the strike price so that we have the maximum value and the max profit, which is what we are trying to get at, is going to be undefined because we don't know when this rolls off. Let's say we pin it, the underlying price expires right uh, at the strike price, and we don't know what this long call is going to be worth. So what we need to do is we need to find a way to approximate a value to, to try to see what will happen if the implied volatility stays just around the same as it is now and what would be the value of the remaining call if we actually do if the underlying price actually expires right at the strike price well in that case we can try to approximate it by looking at the add the money call premium for a days to expiration number that's going to be the difference between the back and the front expiration and then minus whatever we paid for the calendar spread so the max loss is going to be what we paid for the calendar spread this is one of the good things about the calendar spread our risk is completely defined and remember we're only talking about the back and front expiration together once this rolls off something uh, the the um the strategy is going to be different and we're going to analyze it differently. But when we have both the back and the front as a calendar, the most we can lose is the money that we paid to initiate it. OK, so if we want to figure out the max profit for this call calendar spread, we need to see what the call premium currently is for the difference between the back and the front expiration now so that we can try to guess uh, what the, the call is going to be if it expires right at the money. If it expires, if the, the underlying price is right at the strike price. So we would look, for example, if we have 
the back expiration is 40 days and the front expiration is 15 days, we want to figure out, okay, what is a call going for? What is the current price of the call at the at the money? Because we're simulating that is going to be at the money. The at the money call with 40 minus 15 with 25 days, because this is what we're going to have. So if things go according to plan and we happen to get exactly what we want, we're going to have a, uh, an underlying price that's going to pin the strike. And then we're going to ask ourselves, how much is the uh, call that's at the money going for with 25 days? Because that way we're going to try to look into the future and see what that call is going to be going for. The important thing about this is to understand that the max profit is going to be an approximation. There is no tool, there is no system, no platform that can tell you with accuracy what the max profit could be for your strategy. So because of this, the max profit is going to be an approximation and so are the break evens. The break evens are also going to be approximations because we need to figure out the point at which at expiration, at the first expiration, our the value of the call that we have remaining is going to be equal to what we paid for it so that we don't have a profit or a loss which is the break even and then based on this number we can figure out using a symmetrical value which is going to be another approximation we can figure out the break even for the other side which is going to be on this side of the strike price okay so break evens and also max profit is going to be an approximation Now we're going to do the same thing with puts. It's the same, the exact same thing. We have a long put in the back. We have a short put on the front at the same strike price. And we have a calendar spread with puts. Same thing. Structure is short one at the money or out of the money put in the front month as strike price K. Long one out of the money or at the money put in the back month at strike price K. Long in the back, short in the front. Okay, the max loss is going to be strictly what we paid for it. This is the most we can lose. And again, we're talking about when we have the calendar spread. Okay, so when we have both expirations present. Okay, so the um, line is very similar to the one with calls. It's, it's pretty much the same. It's centered at the strike price. Here we are simulating that the add the money is, is here. So this these puts are both out of the money. So the, the profit peaks right at the strike price. And we're going to have to do something similar to what we did for the calls. We're going to have an approximation for max profit where we're going to sim simulate what happens right now with a put that's at the money. How much premium do we have so that we know the, the best case scenario, how much profit or how much premium we're going to have. And then we're going to have to deduct. We're going to have to subtract the uh, amount that we paid for this calendar spread. So break evens, again, they're not defined. We're going to have to figure them out somehow. And that's what most um, simulation tools do. And But they're not accurate because they depend on what the uh, back expiration is doing as opposed to the front expiration and we don't know if implied volatility is going to go higher or lower in the back and in the front so the, so this is what a calendar spread does a calendar spread is mostly a strategy that relies on the fact that the front month is going to start decaying at an accelerated rate we're going to look at this when we start talking about the greeks but basically theta is it's faster and it's higher in the front month than it is in the back month. So because of this, we're going to start seeing profits at the same time, Vega. So, so the, um, the amount that the uh, premium um, goes higher by based on implied volatility is going to be higher in the back because we, because Vega is proportional to, the uh, days to expiration to the duration of the trade or to the duration of the uh, option. So 
these strategies are mostly used when we think that uh, that the uh, underlying price is going to stay inside a certain range and also when we when the implied volatility in the front is more elevated than it is in the back or when we think that the volatility in the back month is going to grow higher than the volatility in the front month so this is when we use these strategies with puts and with calls I know it's a little bit confusing in terms of getting the break evens and getting the max profit, but this is exactly how these strategies work. And you need to understand this and you need to work around this so that you can use it effectively. They are a very important tool in your arsenal because so far we've only used one single expiration. And this opens up the world of different of, of multi expiration strategies, and that's going to allow you to look at implied volatility and time to expiration um, in a in a in slightly in a different way now just to make sure we understand when we talk about two different expirations we have them here in this case we have october and november with different days to expiration they have different implied volatilities and these implied volatilities are moving independently so don't think that just because we currently have 27 in the front expiration and 30 in the on, in the back expiration that if we go if we if implied volatility goes higher by three points for example by three percentage points that this is going to go to 30 and this is going to go to 33 that's not necessarily the case this might go to 31 while this one goes to 30 so we don't know this we don't know how they're going to behave because these two different implied volatilities also depend on term structure how they move independently so this is another um, another situation and another thing that we need to pay attention to when we have a calendar we're also playing with the term with the term structure of implied volatility Now we're going to start analyzing calendar spreads from a different perspective from a slightly different perspective because i know and i understand this might be a little bit overwhelming because now you're understanding what implied volatility is and how to what you want the market to do in different when you have different positions on and now all of a sudden we're talking about two different expirations and now you don't know do i want iv to go higher to go lower do i want the, the underlying price to stay in a certain place why am i um why is my profitable range around the strike price etc so we're going to start analyzing this from an intrinsic and extrinsic value perspective and i think this is going to be an eye-opener in terms of how to look at calendar spreads from now on and that's going to make it easier for you to understand how how to use them and uh, what you want the market to do when you have a position on such as a counter spread so we have a back expiration and the front expiration in this case i'm going to be analyzing uh, a, a call calendar spread but of course this applies to the uh, put calendar spreads as well but we're going to focus on call calendar spreads uh, so that we understand uh, how to uh, analyze extrinsic and int intrinsic value so we uh, buy a call in the back we sell a call in the front same strike price we're going to have a calendar spread okay we already, we already saw this we more or less know um, how we're going to get the information the necessary information for the strategy but now we're going to look at it in terms of intrinsic and extrinsic value so now we know let's this is a, a refresher on intrinsic and extrinsic value intrinsic value only depends on the underlying price being compared to the strike price in the case of calls anything that's above the the uh, the strike price is going to have intrinsic value anything that is at the money or out of the money so uh, right at the strike price and below is not going to have any intrinsic value now you're going to notice of course that when you look at the when you buy the call in the back expiration is going to be more expensive because we're going to initiate this position for a debit now 
Why is this more expensive? Well, because we have more days to expiration, and this is the reason why we have a higher extrinsic value than we have in the front. Remember, now intrinsic value depends on strike price and underlying price. Extrinsic value depends primarily on implied volatility and time to expiration. Once you consider these two, they're going to give you a value of extrinsic, an extrinsic value of the option. And the higher implied volatility you have, the longer time to expiration you have, the more extrinsic value you're going to have. So this is what I wanted you to focus on. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to separate out the uh, intrinsic value from the extrinsic value so that we can look at them separately and that things are clearer. And as you can see, the first thing that you need to notice is that intrinsic value is exactly the same between the front expiration and the back expiration. So when you put a calendar on, you're not betting on anything intrinsic. Intrinsic is the same. If the underlying price starts going higher up by a lot, the intrinsic value is going to be the same. The only difference is going to be in the extrinsic value because extrinsic value depends on volatility and time to expiration. So you're going to have this distribution somewhat like a, a type of normal distribution kind of. This is going to be extrinsic value peaking right at the at the money. So when we, when we put it on, and for example, we are here, we're putting it on out of the money. So what we're doing is we're buying the back and selling the front. So we're buying this. So imagine that this is this much right here and we're selling this much. So we're paying the difference. We are doing a time spread. Remember, this is called time value. So we're doing a time spread. So when we put it on, this is what we pay. We pay the difference between this and this. And if it expires at expiration, if we are at the strike price, we're going to have the maximum value of extrinsic value in the back. And because it's expiration, time is zero, the uh, extrinsic value and also the intrinsic value, because we're right at the strike price, is, are going to be zero. So the front month, the front expiration piece is going to roll off. You're not going to have any value left and we're going to have only the back month having any value. So this is what is going to give you profits or losses. So now this value minus the value of this, which is going to be zero, is going to tell you whether you made money or lost money. Now, if the underlying price expires in the money, then you're going to start having intrinsic value, right? It's going to be intrinsic, but your back month is also going to have that same intrinsic. So you're protected that way. But then your extrinsic is going to start going lower, even though the front month is also going to start going lower. Okay, because it's going to have less time to expiration, fewer days to expiration. Okay, so it's just the value of the of the calendar spread is based on extrinsic value only and this is what you're betting on when you're putting a position on you're just betting on something um, that when you put it on this difference between this extrinsic and this extrinsic is going to be uh, this difference is going to be less and the difference is going to widen as time passes and as extrinsic value on both components starts changing so what can we get from this from this explanation the important thing to notice here is that when you have a calendar spread they have both components have the same intrinsic value and they have different extrinsic value and this is what you're betting on, this is where you want to either make money or lose money, hopefully make money, of course, but this is where you're trying to get the profits or losses. There is no intrinsic, it's only extrinsic. And this is important to understand because we have the same strike price, we have the same intrinsic value front and back. Yet another way we can analyze calendar spreads is by looking at the Greeks. So we're going to analyze, we're going to focus on 
a call calendar spread, but the same thing applies to a put calendar spread, of course. We're going to be buying a long call. We're going to be buying a call on the back expiration, and we're going to be selling a call in the front expiration. Okay. If we look at the delta, for example, we know that when we look at these lines, the red line being what the delta is, this is the add the money, okay? This is the strike price and this is the delta. So the add the money is right here. And we know that when we have very little time to expiration, this is going to be uh, vertical and horizontal lines, whereas prior to expiration, they're going to be curves. And these curves are going to be sharp or less sharp, depending on the days to expiration. The green line means that you have a longer time to expiration than the red line. So it starts um, going and uh, approaching the uh, vertical and the horizontal lines that uh, characterize the delta. Okay, so the red line is with uh, f very few days to expiration and the green line means with uh, longer they, with a longer period, with a longer time to expiration. So if we analyze it this way, we're just going to separate them out. So in the back, we're going to have a delta like this. And on the front, we're going to have a delta like this. Okay. So what we're going to get is that, remember, imagine that we have, that our strike price is here. Okay. So that the add the money. So let's say for a call calendar spread, we put it on out of the money so it's just around here so we know that in in the uh, the long call the long deltas are going to be more or higher than the negative deltas or the the front deltas because remember we're selling this one and calls have positive deltas but because we're selling it this is ne a negative number so when the strike price is higher than the add the money the, meaning that it's out of the money we have more deltas so the the whole position is going to have a positive delta meaning that the price wants so the strategy wants the underlying price to go and hit the um and hit the uh, strike price okay now when the underlying price is in the money, let's say our strike price is here, okay, we're going to have a certain number of deltas, positive deltas, and then we're going to have this, this, this many negative deltas. So the underlying price is going to want to go towards the strike price. So when we're out of the money and the strike price is over here, we want the price to go to the strike price. And if we, if the price goes in the money and the strike price is here, the uh, strategy based on Delta wants the underlying price to go and hit the um, strike price. Meaning that if we summarize this based on Delta, the strategy, a call calendar spread always wants the direction to point towards the strike price. So we always want to pin the strike price and we knew this instinctively because we looked at the uh, PNL graph and uh, we looked at the risk profile and we saw that it was it, it had the max profit right at the strike price so delta is always pointing towards the strike price okay so delta leading towards the strike is what we can uh, summarize from delta in terms of Greeks now what about theta well theta we know that it's different for different expirations, for different time to expiration. We, we know that it's something like this. When we have a long time to expiration, it's short and fat like this. Okay, it's wide, but it's very short. And when it's uh, uh, just about to expire, it becomes really tall and skinny. So just spanning this range. Okay, so it's a different behavior based on the um based on the time to expiration okay i'm i'm plotting here minus theta just to have it on the top but remember that theta is negative usually okay so if we have this separated and um, we know that when we have a long time to expiration theta is going to be like this when we have a short time to expiration theta is going to be like this so we see that in the front 
when we have we sold negative theta, we're going to have positive theta. If we are around the strike price, okay, if we are just around the strike price, if the underlying price is around the strike price, theta is going to be a lot, okay? So we're going to be making a lot of money and we're going to be losing much less money, okay? So that's why we have a certain range that is where we are profitable because the uh, theta is concentrated around the add the money okay so in summary we have if we are around the add the money if the price if the underlying price is around the, the uh, strike price then theta is going to be in our favor by a lot okay because we're going to have we're going to be losing very little money we're going to be making a lot of money okay so the sum the the uh the takeaway here is that we have positive theta around the add the money, okay? That's why it's so important to pin or to have the underlying price go to a profitable range that's going to be around the strike price that we're using for the calendar spread. Now for Vega, it's a little bit different. These ones are proportional, okay? So if we have more time to expiration, Vega is always going to be higher is going to always be larger than something with less time to expiration okay so if we if we separate them we can see that we have a lot of vega on the back we have very little vega on the front so at all times this strategy is going to be positive vega okay we just need to make sure we understand that this vega is being calculated with respect to implied volatility in the back month and this one is calculated with respect to implied volatility in the front month so if the uh, volatility goes higher here in the front but in the back it doesn't move we're not going to be benefiting from this move we need to make sure that we are talking about the the vega in the back month is we need to make sure that Vega on the back month is talking or is being calculated with respect to implied volatility in the back month, not with respect to implied volatility in the front month or with some sort of global general implied volatility. We need to make sure we're talking about the different expirations when, when it comes to implied volatility. So to summarize the Greeks for a candle spread, the delta is always wanting the underlying price to go towards the strike price. The theta, if we are in a profitable area, then uh, we're going to have positive theta because the, the delta, the theta in the front month is going to be more, it's going to be higher than the theta in the back month. Okay. And Vega is always going to be higher in the back month than it is in the front. So it's always going to be positive Vega. But we need to make sure that we understand that Vega is calculated with respect to that implied volatility and not the front implied volatility or any kind of global implied volatility. Now we're going to look at an example for a call calendar spread. Okay, so we have the calendar spread and we're going to see, we're going to look at an example and see what the values would be and how it behaves uh, with different values with the different expirations. So if we have a, uh, an underlying that is trading at $70 and we decide to initiate a call calendar spread at $80, so we're going to do an out of the money call calendar spread, we're going to have to sell the front month call and buy the back month call at the same strike price at the 80 strike price okay so we buy the call at the 80 strike price at a price of six dollars which we do for november with 66 days to until expiration and we sell the call that's in the front month for three dollars the uh, expiration is in october 31 days to expiration so we're selling the the uh 31 days to expiration and we're buying 66 days to expiration okay 
we are selling for three and buying for six. Okay, same strike price, different expirations. So this position is the uh, long calendar spread. This, this uh, the the uh, the uh, positions that we're looking at it are always long calendar spreads, meaning that we have to pay for them. Meaning that we're short the front and long the back. You could also do a short calendar spread, but we are not talking about those positions at this point. We're talking about long calendar spread where where you're short the front and long the back. So this is a long October November. $80 call calendar spread for a debit of $3, 6 minus 3, when the current stock price is $70. So this is our position. We put it on. We have 31 days to go. Remember, the uh, calendar spread is called a calendar spread as long as you have both components. Okay, so the calendar spread itself is only going to be um, going for 31 days, not 66, because the second portion of it, the, the, the remaining 35 days, you're not going to have a front month unless you sell it again, which you could do. And we're going to talk about this in a bit. The max profit is undefined. The max loss is defined. It is $3, what we paid for it. The break-even one is undefined and the break-even two is also undefined. Okay. But we can do an approximation. What if we have an expiration with 35 days to go? So we simulate that this one expired and we have this one with 35 days to go. The current at the money call, so where we have the maximum value at 35 days to expiration, is, is currently trading right now in an expiration that's 35 days for $7. So the max profit is going to be just around the $7 that we think it could have as premium in the future when it has 35 days to go. Remember, we're talking about the remaining, uh, the back expiration call, okay? Seven minus three is going to be just around $4. So this is our max profit is just around $4. The break-even one is going to be the at-the-money price that makes the $80 call at 35 days to go, or just around three, because we need to offset what we paid for it. That's going to be our break-even. So let's say that the current call with 35 days to go that makes the 80 call be trading at three, let's say that it's around the $70. So we have the break even one, an approximation. And just knowing that this distance to the strike price is $10, we just go $10 on the other side and we calculate, we approximate the um, break even two as $90. Remember, these are approximations, okay? There is no way to know for sure, but it's a good guess of what this is going to be when it expires, when the first portion, when the front portion rolls off. The buying power reduction is going to be the debit to initiate the call calendar spread. So no extra buying power reduction. You just pay for your calendar. That's it. Now with the front month near expiration. So just imagine um, 30 days have passed. So this one's about to expire and this one already has uh, only has 36 days to go. With the front month near expiration. The at the money or out of and being out of the money or near the at the money, you can either close the whole spread. So close both components, sell this one, buy this one, and see if we have a profit compared to what we initiated it for. You could also leave the long call on by itself. So you just you just let this one uh, come off. So this one's going to roll off and if it expires out of the money, then it's just going to disappear. And now you have a long call. Now you can trade your long call the way you trade long calls. It's no longer a calendar spread. Now it's a long call. Okay. Or you could also reestablish the calendar spread with another short call at the same strike using a later expiration, but still earlier than the back expiration. So if we have, if 30 days have passed, and this is about to expire and it expires out of the money, you could take uh, the uh, expiration that's one week away from this one 
and you could sell the 80 strike price, the $80 call again. Okay. Now you'd have a new calendar where you're going to have probably, um, let's say 35 days to expiration. And this one is going to have seven days to expiration. So now you're going to have 35 and seven and the, th the same thing, the same characteristics that we talked about are going to apply here. Theta is going to be faster for this one. Um, this one is going to be in the back trying to get the price to go to the strike price, etc. Important thing to understand here is that when once the calendar spread the rolls off, the, once the uh, the front expiration rolls off, there's many things you can do. You can reestablish a calendar spread or you can leave the long call on by itself or you can close the whole thing, but you have to take action. Okay. If you don't take action, then you're going to be left with a long call. And now you're going to have theta um, decaying. So time decay is going to affect your long call the way it affects every long call. It's going to behave just as a normal long call. Okay. So it depends on your trading plan. You need to determine what you're going to do once the uh, front expiration does expire. Now, if the front month is near expiration, same situation, but you're in the money, there's also many things you could do. You can close the whole spread prior to expiration and see if you can, if you have a profit or a scratch, you could take assignment on the short call. Okay. So if the price is in the money, you're going to take assignment on the short call and you're going to have a short stock position and you can exercise your in the money long call. So this one, you could, if, if you're assigned a short call, you can just buy to cover at this price, okay? Because you have a long call here covering that short stock position, okay? So this is another thing you can do, or you can take assignment on the short call, and then you can sell your long call and cover your short stock position separately. You could do either one. Or you could establish another position based on the remaining components. So you can now you have a short stock position. You have a long call. You could do whatever you want. You can you could uh, cover only half of it. You could uh, sell your calls, the the remaining ones, the ones that you're long, etc. It's up to you. You have to de de design your trading plan to accommodate all the different situations and to to deal with all the different potential outcomes of these. Of this strategy now the greeks the option greeks in a profitable area the delta is always leading towards the add the money the theta is positive when we're in a positive area theta is positive because this one is going to be decaying much faster than this one and vega is always positive but remember to consider iv term structure okay so you need the back volatility to go higher and not the front, or at least the you need to get the back volatility go higher more than the front volatility at least. In a losing area, so if the price is around here or here, the delta is also leading towards the other money. So you want you desperately want the price to go to the strike price. The theta is negative because you have the dash line here, and if time keeps passing. This line is going to come here and merge with the solid line. So you have negative theta and Vega is always going to be positive. So it's considering the IV term structure. Calendar spreads can be established using calls or puts, but for ease of management, they're usually placed out of the money. So upside calendars are usually established with calls. Okay. Downside calendars are usually established with puts so that they're out of the money while at the money calendars. So if you want, you can put the, uh, the strike prices right here. It could be with either calls or puts. Okay. Because, but there is no in the money. There is no out of the money. There's, there's only at the money. So you use at the money, either calls or puts. Now we're going to do an example for a put calendar spread or calendar spread with puts. We're going to be um, buying a put and selling a put the same strike price with different expirations. So we have an underlying that's trading at $100. We want to establish a put calendar spread. We want to buy a put calendar spread at the 90 strike price. 
And for that, we're going to have a back month that's going to be November with 66 days to expiration. And it's going to be trading for $7. That put, the 90 put for November is going to be trading for $7. And the 90 put for October is going to be trading for $4. So what's going to happen is we're going to be long the October, November 90 put calendar spread for, for a debit of $3, 7 minus 4. When the current stock price is 100. So this is where the stock, where the underlying price, where the stock price is. We have a calendar here, a put calendar spread, and we're buying the, the uh, 66 and we're selling the 31. We're buying it for seven, selling for four. We're paying $3 to establish it. The max profit is going to be undefined because it depends on implied volatility. The max loss is going to be $3, which is the uh, debit that we paid when we initiated the position. Break even one and break even two are both undefined. But we can do an approximation based on 35 days to expiration, which is when this when this one expires. This is going to have 35 days to expiration. So we're going to take a peek at uh, trying to figure out what the uh, $90 so what the add the money put is trading at with 35 days to go. Now it's not going to be exact, but it's going to give us a good approximation. So, so the current add the money put at 35 days to expiration. So it's going to be the hundred. Remember, this is where the price is right now. We're going to look at the 35 days to expiration. We're going to go and we're going to see what the current add the money put price is. And we see that it's $8. So the max profit is going to be eight minus three that we paid. So it's going to be around $5. Remember, this is an approximation only. The break-even one is the at-the-money price that makes the $90 put at 35 days to go $3. Okay? So let's say that the 105 is the one that makes the 35 days to expiration put, the 90 put, be $3. So that it offsets the um, what we paid for it. Then we're going to have the first one. The BE2 is going to be 105. And we see that this is $15 away from the strike price. So we we uh, we just calculate this break even one, $15 away from the strike price. So it's going to be $75. So these are approximations, remember. Okay. The BPR is going to be the debit that we use to initiate the put calendar spread. So whatever we paid for it, that's going to be our debit, no uh, additional um, uh, buying power. The, uh, the strategy is not going to require any additional buying power. With the front month near expiration, so let's say that we're about to expire on the front. If it's at the money or out of the money, you, can, you could either close the whole spread for a profit or a loss, leave the long put on by itself, or re-establish the calendar spread with another short put at the same strike using a later expiration but still earlier than the back expiration again let's say this one expires this one has uh, 35 days to go let's say we sell the 14 days to go okay 14 days to expiration now we're going to have the 90 calendar but it's going to be 35 days in the back and 14 days in the front. So it's going to be another calendar and we're going to have to look at it the same way we did with this one, but with the new parameters. Okay. It's going to be another calendar. If we do nothing, we're going to have a long put and the long put behaves the way a long put behaves. Nothing different. Yeah. If you, if you know how to, what to do with long puts, what, whatever your trading plan uh, has, um, in terms of uh, the guidelines to do what to do with uh, long puts, that's what you have to do. Okay. Now, if the same thing happens, but you're in the money, so the under the underlying price went this far and it went into the money, so in the money, so we have both the back and the front are going to be in the money. Then you can either close the whole spread prior to expiration. It could be uh, for profit. It could be for a loss. We don't know. It depends on the price where you are in this, and it's going to depend on the uh, extrinsic value that you have remaining on your long put in the back. Or you can take assignment on the short put, so long stock, and exercise your in-the-money long put. 
So you're going to take stock and then exercise this one, giving you the right to sell at this price. But if you do this, you're going to forfeit your remaining extrinsic value is going to you're only going to be using the intrinsic value because you're going to be exercising so a better thing to do would be to sell this long put it's going to have intrinsic and extrinsic value and then sell the stock that you were put at the market price and then you might recover some of the money that you lost if you were in in a in a, in a losing trade or you might you might make a little bit more money if you were in a winning trade okay so this is this option take assignment on the short put so long stock and sell your in the money long put as you sell your stock position so simultaneously you could sell your stock and then sell your long put or you could establish another position based on the remaining components maybe this one rolled off the um, the front put okay this one came off now you have a long put you can maybe um, sell a put over here and then you're gonna have a long put spread or you could roll this one to a further expiration and then establish another calendar you can do whatever you want at that point it's no longer the original calendar it ceases to exist and now you have to uh, you have to have your strategy morph into whatever it is that you wanted to do now in terms of option Greeks in a profitable area, the delta is always leading towards a strike price, so you always want the underlying price to pin your strike price. Theta is always going to be positive if you are in a profitable area, so if you are in this range. And Vega is always going to be positive no matter what. Now, just remember that we're talking about Vega with respect to the implied volatility for that expiration. In a losing area, the delta is still going to be trying to lead you towards the strike price. Theta is going to be negative because now the dashed line is going to be approaching the solid line, so it's going to be down. And Vega is going to be positive, but remember that you have to consider the uh, IV term structure. And what we mentioned before, calendar spreads can be established using calls or puts, but for ease of management, they're usually placed out of the money. So upside calendars are usually established with calls and downside calendars with puts, while at the money calendars can be established with either calls or puts okay so this is basically what you can do with um, a put calendar spread we already saw the call calendar spread and uh, this is a strategy that can be used when we anticipate an increase in implied volatility especially in the back month and also if we think that the underlying price is going to be uh, inside a certain range that's when you would put on a uh, calendar spread in our trading what we notice is that calendars usually don't move a lot they're very slow moving vehicles so what I would do is put one on and then again you don't you can't make a lot of money because the back month is also um, eroding as time passes so your max profit as you saw is going to be maybe maybe 1.5 times or maybe twice as much as you paid for it so this is the, the absolute maximum profit you can get out of it so usually we don't aim for max profit we we usually have a target of uh, probably around 15 to 20 percent of max profit and then we take it off we take the whole thing off so calendars are very slow moving vehicles and uh, either calls or puts they're the same um, they move very slowly they give you very little profit very little loss as well um, they move very slowly so when you have a profit in a calendar spread uh, you shouldn't wait you should take it and take it off and bank it because uh, you can't make too much money anyway so if you have a long call it could always go very high and uh, you have exponentially growing profits but in this case your max profit is very it's not it's not worth keeping this strategy on for a very long time especially if you already have profits because those can disappear anytime if the underlying moves violent, violently either to the upside or to the downside so what we would suggest is if you see any profit of around let's say 15 to 20 percent of max profit uh, then you I, I would take it off 
Now remember that uh, you don't have, you don't know the max profit. You always, you only approximated it, but you know how much you paid for it. So you could also target um, target your um, your your max profit based on the debit that you uh, that you paid. So if you can get let's say fifteen percent of what you paid for it, then at that point I'd be satisfied with a profit of of that magnitude. You don't. You don't necessarily make a lot of money. You don't lose a lot of money. They're very, as I said, slow-moving vehicles, and uh, that's how you use calendars in a in a in a typical uh, portfolio. They have a place uh, for um, they have a place in a portfolio because most of the uh, strategies that we trade are premium selling. So if you are short a lot of Vega, this is a way to get positive Vega. Now we're going to analyze calendar spreads on the platform and what we're going to do is we're going to use Netflix, NFLX and we are going to use two different expirations to do the calendars. We're going to use October with 32 days to expiration and November with 67 days to expiration. So I'm going to put on a calendar, a long calendar spread with calls first and then with puts and we're going to analyze them and see what they can tell us about the uh, about the actual strategy and what we can get from it. So first, I'm going to put on the account call calendar spread. I'm going to go here and I'm going to go uh, right button on the mouse. I'm going to go buy calendar. And of course, the uh, platform knows that the platform knows that I'm going to be using this one as the front month, but it doesn't know which one I'm going to pick as the back month. So I'm going to have to select it manually here. Okay. I'm just going to change it to November and we can take a look here. Calendar. We're buying one contract of Netflix, October, November, 500 call for 1305. So if we go to the confirm and send page, we have the order, which is buy one contract of a calendar in Netflix, 100 shares per contract, uh, November 20th, 2020, October 16th, 2020, 500, it's a strike price with calls at 1305. This is what I'm going to pay for this calendar, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send this one to analyze. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to do the put side as well. Okay. So here I'm going to be doing the 460 put calendar spread. So I'm going to be selling the 460 and I'm going to be buying the 460 in a, in a later expiration. So I'm going to be selling the 460 October put and I'm going to be buying the 460 November put. Okay. And this time I'm going to do it by using the, uh, the ask for uh, buying and the bid for selling. And I'm going to hold the uh, control key to add the legs to the order. Okay. So I'm going to be selling this one. I hold the control key and I add the second leg, which is the 460 as well. And we have it here. Okay. So we have the calendar. We're going to be buying one October, November, 460 put. For 1285 and as you can see here the only buying power effect and that was the same with the call is the money that we paid there is no break even there is no max profit there is no max loss theoretically okay but we know that the uh, th those could be approximated okay so I'm gonna send it to analyze and here we have, this is something very, very, very interesting. We have here is a double calendar, okay? This is another strategy, but we're not going to look at that one right now. We're only going to be looking at the uh, call calendar and to the put calendar spread separately. Okay, so we have the uh, call calendar spread here. And... The first thing that we can notice is that the shape is similar to what we looked at in the examples. Okay. And the max loss is what we paid for it. 1305 right here. Okay. And 
you can see if we look at the Greeks, the uh, 402, if we are at 402, we want the underlying price to go to the strike price. So delta is positive. If we're at 482, delta is positive. If we're at 562, if we're here, delta is negative. So we always want to go to the strike price. Okay. Theta, when we're here, okay, when we are at this point, when we're in the losing area, we have negative theta. And when we are in a profitable area, such as this one, we have positive theta. Okay. Vega is always positive. And this is what 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 is in the platform right now. And you can see that right at this price, it wouldn't be a profit or a loss. But if we go here, we have a little bit of profit today. We need to let some time pass before we can see um, before we can see uh, good profits. Okay, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to accelerate the passage of time. I'm going to move time so that you can see the uh, the purple line go move towards the blue line. Okay, you can see here the line is moving. Now we are about to expire on the front expiration. Okay. So this, this one expired and now it becomes a long call, which is what we mentioned before. Now at this point, because it expired, we only have the long call. Okay. And we're going to do this with the put as well. This is the same. Remember the price is here. The price is around uh, 486. So it's this one. So this is to the downside. We have the puts right here at 460. Okay. So if we simulate the passage of time, you can see that it approaches and it merges eventually with the expiration line. And it's the front expiration. Once this one rolls off, it becomes a long put because now we no longer have the um, the short put in the front month now we could sell another of course we could sell another put with an expiration that's later than the one that just rolled off but before the one that we are long and we're going to recreate a calendar okay so that's uh, some traders like to do that they they like to initiate a calendar and then roll the front expiration forward all the time to get additional credit, additional credit all the time until it reaches the long. And at that point, there is no point in doing a calendar anymore because you now you have the same expiration. So this is a calendar spread. As I was mentioning, the uh, they are used when we anticipate an increase in volatility, especially in the back month volatility. Also, a, um, when we think that this is going to expire in a range. So, for example, if we look at the call calendar right here, you can see that you have this range, this, which is a profitable range. So if you think that it's going to expire and by expire i mean the front expiration if you think that it's going to expire in this range then you put it on and that's it you wait for it to get into this area with profits right also this is going to start making money because the theta in the front month is going to be higher and it's going to accelerate much faster than the theta in the back month so that's how a calendar spread works with calls or with puts. It's a strategy that doesn't move a lot. You're not going to get a lot of profits from it, but you're not going to lose a lot of money because of it, because it's only the money that you put in. And only if you take it all the way to expiration and it's really, really bad, it's really outside, really far from the profitable range, will you lose the whole thing. For the most part, you always recover some of it even when you lose so these strategies have around a 
just around the a 40 40 35 to 45 percent probability of profit and max profit is just about 1.2 times or 1.5 times to maximum to a maximum of twice the money that you put in so the, the these are it, it varies of course but those those are general parameters so a calendar spread is a strategy with two different expirations same strike price and with both calls or both puts long the back short the front for a debit you want it to expand so you want the uh, calendar to go for a for a more expensive price so that you can sell it and and make a profit they move very slowly max profit is not a lot it's usually between 1.2 and maybe twice as much as you put on um as you put it on for and around the 35 to 45 percent probability of profit and and that's about it it's a very conservative strategy and um, that's going to be our introduction to calendarized positions okay same strike if we do two different expirations with different strike prices that strategy is going to be called diagonal and we're going to look at it later but at this point this is a calendar and now you know how to trade calendar spreads with calls or with puts.